Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now the beginning of February of 2022 and we're only getting closer to the release of the Book of Boba Fett season finale before Disney and Lucasfilm really progress with the Book of Boba Fett season two and exactly what they're about to provide to the entire Star Wars fandom at heart. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, by the way, guys, I am on Twitter at Mike Zero One. If you guys want to go ahead and give me a follow on there, I do make sure to post a couple of entertaining things from time to time and really interact with you guys further. So we're now in a very interesting phase of Star Wars, given that we have a lot of the sets being built as we speak for not just the Ahsoka Tano series, but also for the other Mandalorian season three scenes that are about to be filmed this March, that's really gonna conclude principal photography before they move on to post-production. So with that being all said, one thing that John and Dave are really settled on is exactly how do they craft Luke Skywalker for the new Star Wars TV shows. They already used him in Mandalorian season two and the Book of Boba, and now they're looking at ways in order to evolve him in new Star Wars shows such as Mando Season 3 and 4, the Ahsoka Tano series, and other TV shows that will be unveiled at Star Wars Celebration coming this May. So one thing that is for certain is that we already know that everybody ranging from Deborah Chow to Peyton Reed and all these other different directors that are coming on board again for future Star Wars seasons of already existing shows and new shows as well. It just goes to show you that they really are keeping a lot of talent and really sticking to their guns when it comes to what works and what doesn't work for Star Wars. And so far, you know, we have seen the Book of Boba Fett and it's been a little bit of an up and down cycle. You know, I know that some fans had mixed reactions with the Robert Rodriguez directed episodes, but that is going to be the season finale, in case you guys did not know. Uh, Rodriguez will be directing the last episode, so it's going to be interesting to see exactly what the fan reception is going to be like. Now, on top of all of this, with the Book of Boba Fett Season 2 now in the talks between Disney and Lucasfilm that will be finalized after the release of, of course, the season finale, both creators Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are beginning to work on the Ahsoka Tano show by supervising the new sets that were recently built for the season. Now, however, it's described that behind, this, behind the scenes, both John and Dave have been making key changes to the franchise, one of which has a lot to do with Luke Skywalker and how he will be used in future Mandalorian seasons and new Star Wars TV shows, and how he will be used in future Mandalorian seasons overall. It's described that John and Dave are moving forward with a big design change for Luke as well as a story change for the character. This is said to be all planned for the Mandalorian season four for starters, which is described to jump ahead in time by a couple of years that will feature a slightly older version of Luke in his early to mid 30s, with a beard that will be used on him in the beginning from Mando season four, wearing a set of ceremonial robes that are near similar to what Luke wears in The Force Awakens. So in case you guys are unaware, ceremonial robes are the Jedi robes or the Jedi outfit that you see Luke wearing at the very end of The Force Awakens where he's standing on the edge of the cliff on Ahch 2. Basically, they are going to be giving a young version of Luke that outfit now and giving him a beard, making him a little bit more of a wise Jedi. This actually dates back to one of the canon comics not so long ago that dropped by Disney. And it kind of shows you everything ranging from Luke Skywalker teaching the Jedi students in front of his Jedi temple along with Ben Solo. He has a beard in this part, of, you know, in this moment in time. So it could very well be that's exactly where we're heading. Now, when we look at everything ranging from John and Dave changing certain aspects of Star Wars lore, we already know that in the comics, Yoda's lightsaber was destroyed. It was incinerated. You know, Palpatine and Vader watched it burn. And now it was magically back. So either A, Dave Filoni retconned that, or B, he made a mistake, or C, it's very likely that Yoda had a backup lightsaber. It could be something as simple as that. Now, on top of this, it's noted that this design change comes from Jon Favreau as he wanted to explore a more wise version of Luke for a little while in his younger years, and that they will be testing different versions of Skywalker with each Star Wars TV show. Now, this is not just going to create different versions of Luke, but it also helps the merchandise for Disney. Separate from all of this, on a story level in Mando Season 4, Luke is set to meet Mara Jade while trying to hunt down and find Grand Admiral Thrawn. 
Mara Jade is said to be Thrawn's hand in the series instead of Palpatine's hand, like she was in Star Wars Legends. With Favreau and Filoni working on Luke Skywalker's design changes and overall new storyline, it's safe to say that fans are getting ready to witness true Star Wars Legends in live action form. This version of Luke, however, was inspired from the current canon comics of Luke, and it will tie directly into when the Jedi School and Academy is further progressing and nearing completion. Now, the way that both Luke and Mara Jade are set to meet has to do with Luke, Ahsoka, and Din Djarin going on an adventure and quest together to find Thrawn until Mara Jade steps in and starts a fight. Filoni and Favreau are set to give both Luke and Mara a brief battle between, of course, Luke and Mara in a saber duel before Luke convinces Tamara that Thrawn is manipulating her and giving her false promises. So once again, Thrawn is basically going to become the new Palpatine figure in the Mandoverse, at least for a little while. Basically, if you look at Thanos in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Thrawn is going to be the equivalent of that for at least a little while. And I kind of like that, how they're focusing on a main villain that jumps to another main villain eventually. It's kind of got that Marvel format to it, but it's not going too much in that direction. It's kind of just taking inspiration from that. And I kind of like that. I kind of enjoy how they're featuring, you know, such a you know, uh, a villainous character such as Thrawn that's going to have all these different plans and all these different, you know, uh, reasons to what he's doing and how we're going to be learning more and more about them as time flies by with all these new Star Wars shows. So moving on from that, all right, now this is how Luke Skywalker is going to actually let the concept of love, romance, and attachment roll its way into the Academy, with Favreau and Filoni also prepared to explore Luke using mighty powers in Season 3. Season 4, however, will introduce a very wise version of Luke that is more sure of himself even more so than he was in Book of Boba. Now, it's a long journey that Dave and John are getting ready for right now, and it's something that they will be truly special for the Star Wars fandom. That's the thing about Luke right now, is that basically what they're doing is that they are taking a lot of key aspects from both Legends and the already existing Star Wars canon. And that has a lot to do with the design changes for Luke, with him having a beard, ceremonial robes, etc. Now, a lot of that has to come from the Rise of Kylo Ren comic in there. You kind of learn a little bit more about Skywalker. So I don't think it's that point in time just yet by Mando Season 4. It's just that they're taking inspiration from that version of Luke from the comic. And it, it, it eventually will roll into that storyline where, you know, we saw what we saw in the Rise of Kylo Ren comic where Ben Solo is a Jedi student under Luke Skywalker's wing and eventually leading to the storyline of... Ben Solo burning down the temple. Now, obviously, when we go ahead and look at everything related to using Luke Skywalker in such a different way by changing him, eventually, to letting the concept of love, attachment, and romance make its way in there, that's a big deal because we saw that what Dave Filoni did in Book of Boba Fett's Chapter 6 episode, all right? Luke is literally making Grogu decide, you know, the way of the Mandalorian or the way of the Jedi, basically choosing between the Beskar armor or the lightsaber. And if he chooses the Beskar armor, Luke mentions how that is the path of, you know, love and attachment and pretty much, you know, shies away from the Jedi way. That's all going to change eventually and how Dave and John are going to change Luke Skywalker forever after Mando Season 4 when he meets Mara Jade. And that, to me, I think is a very interesting way to go about doing that. So, overall, guys, you know, let me know what you think about all of this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.